Hi, this is Eric. I am the Grey Goat, and you're in the Grey Goat Garage, and we're powered by OMBWarehouse.com. Um, yeah, the dream job of uh, doing tech support is getting a Predator 459 engine and tearing it apart. Un unlike uh, what you're going to see from a lot of guys on YouTube that are going to, uh, you know, Harbor Freight sends them an engine, and they're like, oh my God, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. This is fantastic. Oh, look at this engine. Oh, it's 459 cc's. Uh, blah blah great okay but here's the real nuts and bolts when you have to tear an engine apart spec it out measure everything see what's compatible with it then, then you start coming into the shortcomings of the predator 459 engine it's still a fine engine put it on a generator put it on a log splitter put it on a rototiller a snowblower it'll be great for that when you want to build performance in this engine that's when we start to have some shortcomings um, it, it's got a, a very nice crankshaft um, that uh, is very heavy and it takes all the standard camshafts this is a this is the stock cam here uh, the dyno cams uh, this is the 275 grind for the GX 390 the same cam it, it, this cam will go right in this block and that's where things get tough so as we're looking for a billet connecting rod and we all know we need billet connecting rods um, even though you're going to say, hey, the 459, it has an oil pump in it, and, you know, I, I don't need um, a, a billet rod because this rod's not going to starve for oil. To the contrary, this rod is going to starve for oil. You'll notice that the crank is not cross-drilled. There is no positive oiling going to the main journal on the crank. So this is still just like a, a regular stock engine with a stock rod, and the ARC rods are substantially longer and there is no ARC rod that will fit in this engine with this crank. So you don't have positive pressure going to the main journal. So billet rods are out, we, the, there is nothing for this and the stock rod's not going to hold up uh, because it's not positively lubricated. It's just that dipper scooping the oil, splashing it around is all that's going to lubricate that rod. So that's out of the equation. So the next thing, billet flywheels. Billet flywheels are very important to high performance engines. This factory cast iron flywheel, which is uh, about eight pounds of uh, the finest Chinese um, cast iron that you can find. Um, it has a very large taper in it. And we'll measure the taper. And we're gonna go just rough at 1.308 inches and now we have the ARC billet flywheel very nice piece with the ring gear and everything so we can have electric starter and the inside diameter is quite a bit smaller and we're just going to approximate here I'm not getting that deep into it at 1.125 so obviously this flywheel that fits the GX 390s, Predator 420s, um, and most 13 horsepower clone engines, it's not gonna work on this Predator 459. So we can't use a billet flywheel or a billet connecting rod. And um, that, that's not a great scenario for building an engine. You'll also see, good Lord, that there's a quite a big discrepancy in the diameter of these flywheels as well. So no billet flywheel, no billet rod, Okay, well, that's all the negative stuff. Let's 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 do some positive notes. Um, on, on a positive note, OMB Warehouse does have headers for these now. We have inch and an eighth headers that'll fit over the wider flanges on the head. We have these headers for mud boats and go karts only. Um, the go-kart ones may fit a mini bike if you're inclined to put this on a mini bike, but um, I, I don't know why anybody would build this engine and I'm not sponsored by uh, Harbor Freight. So comes with 38 millimeter intake, 34 millimeter exhaust, both have 6.5 stems. Um, and the piston was 80 thousandths in the hole to, to start off with. So um, that, that, that's not a good sign. It's got kind of a chunk 
out of the head here where the gasket stuck into it. Um, not, not a bad head, uh, hemi head, um, has the, the solid stanchion rockers, has a, a bolt that goes through it to, to locate the pins and uh, the nice little adjusters like the 212 Hemi have. So it's a decent head. Got a nice round intake port, nice round exhaust port. So, you know, maybe there's some power in this head, but um, I'm not gonna know. So the other positive thing that everybody's raving about is the oil pump. And this is the oil pump right here. It pumps oil through this passage. And Oh no, it pulls oil out of here and it pumps it in through here and it's positively lubricating the, the side cover, but you're gonna notice there's no roller bearing. So we, we just have another scenario where we have uh, steel riding in, in aluminum with, some, with a little bit of oil pressure, but how long is that gear gonna last? Um, don't use thick oil, uh, you know, make sure you're using a lightweight oil. You know, but it's also pumping some oil into the um, the cam on the outside cam journal. So, and then it goes into this hole right here that pumps it through the engine. So, you're going to notice this block is is different than the other blocks, like the two tw uh, 420 engine, because it has this O-ring right here, and this is an oil passage. So, it's it's pumping oil in through here, and it's coming in through the other side of the engine to lubricate the other side here. But then again, there's no bearing here. There's no roller bearing. It's just the crank riding in the aluminum case. So I, I, I really think this was a step backwards in engineering because we'd be better off with roller bearings in the case and the side cover and just have it splash lubricated. That's worked well for years and years and years. But you know, I, I imagine perhaps this block is cheaper to produce because of that, uh, not having to have the bearing in there because bearings aren't cheap. So, um, to me, uh, it's, a, it's a nice little engine. If you're gonna leave it governed, don't touch it, have fun with it. Um, if you want to modify it for performance, then um, I, I would uh, caution you against that. It does come with these pretty slick little aluminum push rods though. And uh, I've never seen these in a stock engine. They're quite nice. Uh, they have some, some little holes in them to, uh, I, I guess let oil drain out of them or maybe keep internal pressure out of them, in them. I, I, I don't know. But um, yeah, they, they're nice little pieces. Um, fantastic, I, I'm, not, I'm not sold on this. So um, now in this beautiful, lovely dream job of doing tech support, now I get to reassemble it. So um, not gonna do a video on that uh, because I'm just gonna put it back together as it was stock, leave it alone and um, put it back in the box and uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it at that point. Um, it, it's not really suitable for a boat anchor, but it would make a good anchor. That's my take on the Predator 459 engine. I'm Eric, I am the Grey Goat. Sorry if I ruined your hopes and dreams on the Predator 459. Thank you.